following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour on this 21st day of May, 21st day of June. My pleasure to be here. My pleasure was also to be on the 21st of May. And uh, we're looking at a Dow that's up 44 points at 17,849. The S&P is at 2,089. It is up six. The comp index is only up four. The IBB, the biotechs are pulling it back, dragging it down. The VIX is below 18. It's at 17,097, uh, down 38 cents. You've got a very interesting uh, situation here. The E-mini, the uh, September E-mini, needs to climb above yesterday's high it makes it kind of difficult above 2092.50 to be able to get leg b but so far above the nine period moving average at 2075 that's that support we're looking at 2080 up six it's very good action so far today but i'm really impressed with the weekly chart and that's one of the reasons why we went along we switched on the short side to the long side could be totally wrong we got the bricks are coming up who knows what's going to happen it looks like it's going to be positive but if you look at this chart right here um you'll see that i could do a number of things this is the weekly chart of the e-mini which trades almost 24 hours a day. So look at this. Yes, you've got an arch formation possibly forming. But wait a minute. There's something even more important. There's a pattern here that I call the Chapman Wave Stalk Leg Formation. And if I do this, I've got an arch going to a cup, which makes the ellipse right. It, it joins it so that you've got an oval pattern. And it's a little short in time. So we could even chop around you a little bit. But I can just tell you this, that if we go to leg D above 2110.75, uh, leg C, that is in the weekly chart, I just grab this, I get rid of it, and I say, this is really good, good action. That is the arch formation because we've broken out. And what's really important, um, I'll, do, I'll talk about the monthly in a moment, but what's really important about this particular chart is that with all the news that's being, with all the negative news, over the past uh, three months, two and a half months, we are still above. We the S and P E minis are still above the 200 period exponential moving average of 2047, the nine period moving average of 2064, and this is so far good action. Now, my contention is always that in uh, in the marketplace, people say. Uh, the market hates bad news or uncertainty, and I always say nonsense. Every day is uncertain. What it hates is uncertainty about uncertainty, and that would that would imply that that uh, Janet Yellen speaking now being uh, uh, being um, I, I was going to say interviewed. She isn't being interviewed at all. Actually, Janet Yellen right now is being questioned. Um, uh, politic, uh, politically, maybe, maybe not. But most importantly, she, she's being questioned, and the uh, senators. Let's see what they have to say, because it's really important. I mean, some of the questions are, are, are pertinent questions, and some of them are um, own agenda uh, type questions. It's like when you go to uh, uh, some kind of a conference or something, and then someone asks a question, and they like take seven minutes or something for the question but there's no question there's a statement so i'm looking at this and i'm saying you know the market goes down when the volatility index rallies and bad news is taken all news is taken as bad news and right now in this in this particular press conference we've got uh, oh it's a press conference uh i thought there would be issues being asked to quite anyway whatever it is as long as there's no bad news coming out and the market doesn't perceive it as bad news, this is sanguine. This is quite nice action that we're looking at. Dow's up 35, as I said. S&P's up 5. Now, um, let's just go on because this is going to be very important. I spoke about, the, about gold. I said <clears throat> I didn't really want to be shorting gold because anything can happen with gold. But I did see it having a digestive period. Gold right now is down... Um, $19, and 
in this context, it's a 1272. And what I'd say the 1262-ish area is going to be absolutely critical because if it breaks under 1262, under the nine period moving average in the weekly chart, we fulfilled a bunch of things in this particular pattern, this Chapman Wave stalk leg pattern with the leg, the body, the neck, uh, the, the body and the neck breaking out last week, going to... 1318.90 uh, in the continuous contract and now going back into the body. If it takes out the low of 1200 and 1 1.50 on the continuous contract, that is very negative action. And right now it is just it's just pulling back. It's just digesting. Now I just want to go back for a moment. I had been asked about this, so I'll do it now. Within the Chapman, well, this isn't the Friday, um, but usually Friday, I deal with Chapman Wave techniques in greater detail, but this is really important. Why? Because yesterday I said to subscribers, every day I send out this chart right here with the uh, the daily. I, and lately I've been uh, including the weekly and the 120 minute chart. It used to be just the daily and the 120. Actually, it used to be just the 120. Then then I've now include all three. Why? Because it's so important if the um, E-mini goes to leg C, I mean, we have just taken out every bit of opportunity to collapse and we've pushed higher and that's going to be really important. So here's the Chapman Wave 120 minute chart. Up arrow, most identifiable low bar. Peak A, peak B. What do I always look for um, in, my, in my methodology? This is what I look for. I try to make it as simple as possible and I look for, if I can just do this real quickly, grab this chart right here. Oh, I set a lot, a lot of charts out. Okay. This is the chart. In fact, let's go to this one here. Okay, this is the chart. And basically what it says, the objective in the Chapman Wave is to identify the most obvious lowest low and merely count each successively higher peak until the fourth one, peak D, is formed. Then other things can happen. And lo and behold, now let me take this chart. This, that's what it looks like, right? When you get to D, other things can happen. It could continue in the alphabet, A, E, F, G. It could... It could um, have a bunch of things, but let me just do this right now. What we're looking at here is that when you get a, two peaks that are exactly the same price, I call it a potential Chapman Wave phantom peak. I don't like to use it. I only use it in circumstances, and I say to subscribers, I might have to use this. This might not be a C, but it could be a D. Well, uh, I made it a D, and now we're in this consolidation phase. So I think we're going to be going higher. I think we're going to make a leg C in the 120-minute in the chart. But before we do that, I'm going to go to Mark in Fort Collins. Mark, how are you? Good. How are you, Basil? I'm good. Thank you. Good. Hey, um, you, um, we won't, I won't talk about specifics, but you put out a buy on Ford. And yes. um, you typically will send out charts. I didn't see one today, so I was wondering if you could just go over that for me. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I you know that. what? I, 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 I forgot. All right, so I forgot to put the chart. Let me just show you what we're looking at. Folks, Ford's trading at 1332. One of the reasons why I think that it has a chance, this, this is just a real speculative thing because I, I believe even though it's been making lower lows and lower highs, there, there is enough evidence to say that if certain conditions are, are met, there's a chance that Ford could in fact start to trade in the, the high 13s to the 14s. It's, uh, there's a lot to do, but it's the only way if it, it needs to get to that price before you can feel any comfort at all. I'll be back. We'll talk with Mark, Mark and Ford Collins about Ford F trading at 13.32 down 10 cents. That's a chapter that does a 48. I'll be right. Back. Today, many commodities are trading at relative lows. And now you can take advantage with EvaBank's new limited time, five-year market safe currency comeback CD. This indexed and U.S. dollar-denominated CD offers 100% principal protection and is based on the equally rated performance of currencies of Australia, Canada, Chile, Mexico, and South Africa. These five countries are especially rich in commodities and the respective currencies are poised to do well should commodity prices begin to recover. Keep in mind that no APY or periodic rate of interest is paid on the CD. Don't miss out on this innovative new financial opportunity. CDs must be opened and funded by the upcoming July 14th deadline. To apply online and learn more about the CD, including product terms and disclosures, visit everbank.com forward slash TFNN now. This advertisement is sponsored content. 
Everbank is a member FDIC. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's up 52, SP's up 7. And we're on with Mark and Ford Collins. And what, what I'm really looking at here with Ford. So, this is the story. The way the chart pattern has just been going sideways, if you look at the weekly chart, you can see it very well. The way that the nine period exponential moving average at 13.57 now in the monthly chart has just been an incredible repellent. Every time the bar looks like it wants to challenge that nine EMA, it just, it, it has not, Ford has not closed above the nine period exponential moving average, it's hard to believe, since uh, 2015. That's right there. Um, back in February, March of, of 2015, and then it held it just briefly, and then whoops, went right below the 9 EMA. It's been as low as 10.44. But the reason why I'm trying to do this is I, I'm trying to look at a more intermediate term portfolio, which means that if if um, Ford does a certain uh, has a certain price action over the coming maybe uh, three sessions, let's call it this week into Friday. I then can put in stops or new buys so that I'm looking at it as an accumulation or it's just going to take us out very quickly and, I'm, and then I'm done for a while because I'm going to have to see how it tests the 12.76 low that was made about a week ago. So this is really uh, out of the automobiles uh, in the automobile sector. For instance, if I go to General Motors, General Motors is... It's acting okay if I go to, but not nothing great. It really is it's on the negative side of okay. If I look at the, um, oh, they've changed the symbol, I think. Let me see if I can get it the old way. FCAU, yes, I can. Chrysler, uh, Chrysler's, well, they've, they've changed it because they sold something off and they started a brand new uh, with a symbol, FCAU for Fiat Chrysler Autos. They started back in May the 2nd with a new, uh, they issued a new uh, stock. And this one is, hasn't got much history. It's doing kind of okay. Bad news about the Jeep going on right now um, with Chrysler. But, and, and they don't get a good rating in consumer reports. Although I must say, um, I've spoken to a few people who actually have the Jeeps and the Chryslers, and they seem to be enjoying it. And people that have Fiat's are enjoying it. But my, my thinking here is that Ford is the one from the chart formation, just purely on a chart formation, that's one way, and purely on my empirical observations, is in the product lineup that seems to be 
improving and, and, and has the best possibility of seeing uh, the 17 million cars sold, seeing profits flow positively to negate any any action that maybe it's European, maybe it's dollar, whatever it is. So I'm looking at it as, as a more intermediate term. I'd like to look at it as a more intermediate term, but I'm still going to have tight stops. I don't want to be buying it in the 13s and seeing it trading in the 11s. I don't like that 20% or 18%, 16% decline, sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. It's just, I don't like to do that. So I'm thinking that this is the opportunity, if it's going to do that, if, if by Friday, with Brexit and all, if we suddenly get a spike to the upside, the Dow's for the first time able to trade and hold in the 18,000s, I think that the month, the weekly charts will be improving so much that it gives tremendous support. And I think, I must emphasize that I think, with these low rates, that uh, Ford can continue to, to benefit um, on the bottom line. No, I shouldn't say continue. They should begin to benefit on the bottom line, and they haven't yet. But I'm doing it on a chart basis, and you can see it is kind of stuck. And even if it has a really good rally, that rectangle formation between the, the 14 level and the 1276, that rectangle is going to be absolutely key. It could stay here for a, another month and a half, two months. Uh, I don't know. But I'm just saying if it has an opportunity, the way the stochastic and the MACD and the, and the, the daily chart improved so quickly and have held that improvement, this is the opportunity. Uh, does that kind of get to your question? Yeah, it helps me a lot. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Well, pleasure. And let's see. I mean, <laughs> we do what we can. And so far, it's acting uh, okay for what we, we, we wanted to do today. Thanks so much for calling, Mark. Thank you. Bye-bye. Pleasure. Bye-bye. So, listen, folks, when we're looking at these charts, there are a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. For instance, it's all very well to be talking about upside potential. But this VIX index really has to get from the 18.06 level that it's at right now, down 31 cents. It was at 22.89 just four, one, two, three, four sessions ago. It's a big drop, but I want to see it even further. I want to see the VIX index trading in the 16s. And then by next week, this time, Tuesday, yep, Tuesday of, the, of next week, hopefully instead of being in the 19s or 20s, it's in the 15s, and we've got a really nice rally uh, going. I'm a little concerned that this is Tuesday, just two hours into the uh, second trading day of the week. But that volatility index in the weekly chart is still holding a little bit too strong for my likings. But I think that uh, the day is young. We'll see what happens. And as I say, if Yellen doesn't say anything negative, that's all. She just mustn't say anything. She can talk about whatever she wants, but it mustn't be perceived as negative. I think we're okay. So now let me show you this right here. This is the five-minute chart. Um, see that red line? That is the oil contract. Um, and you see this green? This is uh, the S&P, uh, the SPY. And it's, uh, crude oil is rallying. So you've got a little bit of a rally in the SPY. The SPY is up 59 cents at 208.44. So uh, I also just wanted to mention that every once in a while you can get price action that isn't quite as directional as one would think. And if you look at this, there's beautiful price action going. This is crude oil, red, and green. The SPY was following all the way. Then all of a sudden, crude held beautifully. SPY didn't even want to know. It pulled all the way back into the close yesterday. Now we're looking at crude oil balancing again. Oh, the line represents from the close yesterday at 4 o'clock to the open today at 9.30. So this is only current trading hours. I, don't, I didn't want to change any particular chart to include the overnights. I just wanted to have it as it is right now. So um, it starts at 9.30 and closes off at 4. So that's that. And the other thing I wanted to look at here is within the context of uh, the IWM, which looked like it was doing real well. I had a question about that. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let me go back to SPY. Okay, that's good. There we go. IWM. IWM is, in fact, the uh, ice shares of the Russell 2000 made a potential peak F top right there at uh, 117.65 on the 8th of June. Pulls back quite sharply. Has a nice bounce yesterday. It's actually a little weak today. It's down 46 cents at 114.85. I like things to be in sync, and we've not got that. We've got the Qs a little bit weaker. Look, the QQQ series. 
um, trading at 1735 up 19 cents, but uh, on the 200 period exponential moving average, 107.89 is the nine period moving average resistance on the queues, and it better hold. I would say better hold 107 actually. If it goes to the 106s, I'm not going to be happy about that. Um, and I want you to look at silver. Oh, I had a question about JP Morgan. <clears throat> JP Morgan is trading right now at 62.67 up 30 cents. Um, oh, let me just check this out. So there's a peak E in the weekly chart. Monthly chart says you've got yourself. Um, look at this. There are so many charts that have this symmetric. It's actually a pretty, pretty symmetric triangle. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll come to the XLF. That was part of the question. Uh, XLF, which is up 11 cents at 22.85. As soon as I get back, and then we've got a question about um, go, uh, Bank of America. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report. And make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I can't recall at all whether or not I showed this 10-minute chart of the uh, E-minis. It made a peak E. There was a left side, right side price tie match with the Chapman Wave inside wedge, and it went down. Took a, it took two bars extra to get there, went to 2074.75. Then I drew the V-shaped pattern with another left side, right side price time match. It went there, it got the earlier, the, the, the target was, it wasn't actually the higher of 2080.75, it was really in the, this right in there, the 20, uh, 
think it was around about 20, 2082 area. So it got to 2082.75. Now it's pulling back quite sharply. I think that we've got some choppiness, and that's the most important thing. We've made a, a low, not the low. I don't know yet if it's the low, but we're going to just chop around as long as the yellow doesn't make anybody nervous. I think we, get, we, we should see a little bias towards the upside, and then when she's done, we'll see whether or not the market says, phew, now we can rally or whoa. Now we better be careful. I think the, the upside looks uh, has a greater potential. And then I had a couple of questions, and the questions were, um, so this is the USD JPY. Uh, it just avoided making a, a, a leg D to the downside, 103.53 was the low on the 16th. And uh, we haven't gone, we've gone close, 103.57. 57, yeah. We're, we've, we've gotten real close. But if I look at the monthly chart, and that's really, to me, the most important, with weekly, but especially the monthly, this pattern doesn't look like it's going to settle until it tests the area of 101.20s, the lows that were made around about June of 2014. That's the way it looks in this arch formation. And if I look at the dollar, DXY, the dollar is up 32 cents. Yeah, it's holding very well in this double. Remember I drew in this little double U? The, the soft W pattern, two cups next to one another. And that so far is holding quite well. <clears throat> but as I see it right now, unless the dollar, if the dollar, for whatever reason, by f without this week breaking below, you know, we're almost there. I don't even know if I can say that. Yeah. If the, if the dollar doesn't break below, 93.43 is a low. So if, if the dollar closes below 93, it's a real problem. Then the weekly chart is going to make that H pattern go all the way down, <clears throat> could go to the 91.92 to test it. But if it holds, and in fact, by Friday, it hasn't broken down, but it's, instead it's trading above 94.70, above the nine period moving average in the weekly chart. <clears throat> I'm looking at this and saying, hey, this is quite nice action for the dollar. So that's what I'm looking at. Um, in, in terms of the, the uh, dollar and the euro, EUR, USD, and then we'll go to Scott. Um, it's just in this choppy sideways move. The weekly chart really does look like it wants to pull back a little bit more. Um, I don't know what to say. 1.126. Um, it's just it's stuck in a trading range. And the TLT I was asked about, yeah, TLT I think has made a peak F. So I'm going to go to Scott in Safety Harbor. Scott, how are you? Uh Good. Before we go to AA, I just want to say something about the CX. Uh, do you still think I, I took a, I, I took half your advice, so I did get into it when it went to 660. But do you still think that it will uh, get back to that 550? Remember, we spoke when it was 590, yes. and I was getting a position at that time. Right. So then the 200 period moving average is at 655. Yesterday it got there and pulled back just a little bit. Today it got there and pulled back a little bit more. It's got a gap. Um, good question, TX. Now, <clears throat> you know, people are always say about the British thing, but, but uh, again, I don't know why it's so difficult for traders to see that these things have absolutely nothing to do with the, with, with the stock or the fundamentals. They're excuses for traders to make moves. Yeah, they either not, beat not, it down not, or, or lift it up. So correct. They can make not, the money. not only that, Scott, not only that, what we're looking at here is a situation that says there are some stocks that are in some areas that are actually devoid of anything, to, maybe I wouldn't say to do with the market, but they're in their own, own orbit right now, and CX is one of them. But I'm just going to say to you looking out the weekly chart will be very much improved if it doesn't take out 635. Let's just put it that way. At this particular point, it's holding very well. If it closes under 635, the weekly chart's going to have a tougher time. But so far, the pattern, if you stop right now and say, this is Friday at 4 o'clock, I would have said, whew, I'd made it. It's not a bad-looking chart for the weekly. Now the weekly chart has to try to get into the 669 to 672 area. And that's Let's the go CX. Let's go and see what you think on there, because I, I'm... I'm considering a a, uh, a position in Alcoa today, uh, and it seems to be in a you know kind of a nice uh, trading range here. It's in a trading range, and what's really important about Alcoa A trading at nine dollars and eighty one cents, up five cents today. It had a gap yesterday. It filled a little bit of the gap, and now it's way above. It's into the the wick of yesterday, into the midpoint. 
Um, this is a, as I, I think we've spoken about this before, it's a little bit stronger chart, and the weekly chart is, has made a much, if I had to divide the weekly chart into two levels, um, with one level being uh, everything below nine, and the other level everything above nine, I would say to you, acting as it is right now, Alcoa, if it's able to take out that high that was made for peak C at 10.07, on the 8th of June, not only will that improve the weekly chart, but it would be suggesting quite strongly that there's a U-shaped pattern and it wants to fill a chunk, not all necessarily all just yet, but it wants to fill some of that candle, the ugly candle of the week of the 6th of May that opened at 11.20 and plummeted down to 9.94. Uh, for this stock, yeah, that's I agree, a but move. with that said about the, the, the 11 mark, I, I think that with everything going on with the company, it's it people have a uh, feel safe into getting anywhere into it, uh, eleven or below. So I think there's going to be money, and there is money coming into it uh, because they have that safety. They feel safe there because there was a lot less uh, good things happening with the company when it was at eleven than there is now at nine. Yeah. So, so so let me put it this way because you're looking at this. This is the first time that you're really starting to try to enter stocks that are kind of more, I wouldn't even say intermediate term, because for you this is long, long term, even if it's, a week, <laughs> even if it's two weeks, five right? Days. That's what my wife says, five days. That's, that's he's a long-term investor. Okay. <laughs> so this is different. So I'm going to suggest to you, listen, treat this as an experiment. You don't want to make the experiment your big trades because you really need, you want to know that you've developed a new technique that is going to be solid. So don't get carried away. I would start right now at AA at 9.79, but it would be a small position. I would build on that position as it makes higher highs and higher lows. That's the simplest way to do it. That's telling you that you're on the right track, you've got the right stock, number one. And number two is it says to you, if Alcoa is able to get into the tens at all by the end of next week, in other words, in June, so that in July it has an opportunity to trade in the tens to treat the nines as a base, You've got yourself in an, a, a very nice level, gives you some comfort, and you're already now beginning to, to understand a process that for you right now is just an experiment. You want to be able to document it. You want to be able to come. You want to repeat the same thing as you're trying to do in CX. You want to be able to do the same thing in AA. But I'm just saying, don't get carried away. Don't even think about it. It's acting well. It's, it's, the weekly chart is improving. Take a, take a little bit now at 9.78 and uh, let it prove itself. It takes out yesterday's high. You say, hey, this is acting beautifully. I could even add one penny above yesterday's Basil, high. Basil, it is the most beautiful weather here in Tampa for tennis that you could ever imagine. Oh, I had that yesterday and today as well. Hey, thanks for calling, Scott. Enjoy the day and good luck. Bye-bye. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, 
active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks. So I've got this trend line I was asked about, the USDJPY, the dollar Japanese yen, trading at 104.562, up 0.628. And it's got this trend line that goes all the way back to 1998, up in the 138-ish uh, area. Well, it's a, it's a, it gets smoothed out, so I'm not sure if that's going to move. So it was in the 147s. Well, this trend line comes in. It's trading at 104.56 at 99, yeah, in the 99s. And that says that there could still be a little bit further of a move down to test the left side chunk low of, of uh, 2014. But I don't see, it has to be a big surprise to be able to break to the upside at this point. And the weekly charts is making lower lows and lower highs. And it, it went right under the 200 period moving average of 1.0798. So it's not looking that good. Something's going to have to happen to really change that scenario. Uh, a GPP, a GBP, a USD, I believe, is that well, that's the question. Um, Soros said could drop 20%. Oh, all right. Did he? Did he really? Oh, that means he must be buying. <laughs> that's all Soros. Anybody knows Soros? You, you, you do the opposite. He does the opposite of what he says very often. Most of these guys do. Um, Leg C in the weekly, the British pound uh, pair with the United States currency, dollar currency. The weekly chart is improving. It's in leg C. It's not great, but it's looking like it wants to make an arch formation, another arch formation right there. Um, so the week, and the monthly chart looks the same. The monthly chart is has some good moves in the technicals, but the price appreciation thus far has not been all that great. Um, so I'm looking at this, and I would suggest there's... Uh, the question is, where would I short? I don't know. You know, I... I I'd rather... I stick with the dollar. I'm able, I do that all the time. This, to me, is a chart pattern that says, I, I'm pretty sure that this is um, a single leg A up, that's, oh, man, what's the question? The question is, where's it going to go? Oh, 1.485, maybe to 1.489, sorry, to 1.49, 1.48 to 1.49. Um, that's the resistance that I see. Would I short it? I don't know if this is an A or if this is just a continuation. It's like an aberrational leg a single leg a that is ready an f I, all i'm going to say is gp gpb usd british pound us dollar currency pair it's just it keeps testing the 200 period exponential moving average i think it's going to try to go higher but i would not be shorting i would not be buying i think it's going to be stuck around this level here and you can see that the 200 period simple moving average is just about to cross lower that starts to be a bit of a positive but at this point, I don't see it as a short. I, I would need, if I was going to take a position, 
I'd have to say I'm going to wait. And that is a position. If I'm unsure, I have to wait. So I'm unsure because I think it's at this point in a fairly narrow trading range, and that range won't be narrow for long. <laughs> Coming Friday, I think something's going to happen. All right. So uh, that's what I wanted. And then there's a good question here about the BZQ. The BZQ. I mean, if ever the letters is like Scrabble. What, what do you? What word do you make with a BZQ? Bazactic. All right. So this is trading at 49.92. It is the uh, Brent crude oil last day and it's trading at a peak e in the weekly oh i this is the one i've done before and i'm pretty sure we made left side right side price mismatch in other words we had the time exact but the price didn't get there just missed getting to the levels that we were looking at which is somewhere around 55.98 instead we went to 40 52.85 so i'm looking at this and i think it's going to be in a choppy thing i don't think there's a v-shaped pattern just yet but what I would say is that I'm drawing this in, and that's the pattern we will follow. Ask me again in a couple of days, and I think that I'll be looking at something that says, in the 51s, it could start to fail. And the big question will be, does it come all the way back? Or is it starting a move that says, I really want to get to the 55s on the left side that was made back last year in October or so. So all I'm saying is that I think there's a lot of support. And once again, I don't think I'm, I'm into shorting crude oil at all at this point. Uh, it has pulled back, finished, I suppose, 53 to 47. Hey, that's five points. That's that's a nice short, but we didn't take that. I did say possible peak F top. But look, we've had a 50% rally. So I'm saying that I don't think there's that much here. I think we're going to chop around. So between 51.50 and 49, no, 48.70, I think that's the trading range. Hope that answers your question. Um, so I have answered those. Okay, nice question in the den about RHT. I always look at the RTH, which is the uh, which is the retail index, the market vectors retail ETF. It has Walmart, Home Depot, Amazon, CVS, Lowe's, Costco, uh, Target, just a whole bunch of the famous names right there. Um, and it's looking kind of weak, but it is bouncing a little bit. But RHT was the question. And I remember it very well doing work on RHT, but I don't seem to have it. I have retyped it. Leg D in the daily, but a nice spike up and the technicals are improving. Um, the leg D in the weekly chart says that ABCD, it's done this a couple of times now, and it says once it gets to D, you've got to be a little bit careful. But the technicals are saying that if there is any rally in the market, in the general market, that is, this stock should move higher. Red Hat, and Red Hat is trading at 80.04 up $1.17. Nice action for a day like this. What is this day? It's a day like this. All right, here we go. And a plus sign goes on that day because I do not have any signal yet. It's still in an up mode. All right, so now the weekly chart, a monthly chart is the next thing to do. Whoa, let me see if I can do this real quickly. Peak. A, peak B, peak C, peak D. Um, does it recycle? One, two, three, call it an instant restart. No, I'm calling it E. Yes, A, B, C, D. Excellent. That was a perfect Chapman Wave instant restart right there. So we've got an up arrow. We've got a down arrow. And we've got the circle, which says instant restart in the Chapman Wave right there. And what does it say? It says it's going to pull back and it pulls back. Trough A, trough B, trough C, trough D. There you've got your, your next D. How many Ds? How important is this technique? Ah, I love it. Okay. Now we've got an up arrow. And we've got peak A. Don't skip a peak. Your only obligation in the Chapman Wave is to count each peak successfully. E, F, and I have to call this EFG because if you're looking at the stochastic and the MACD, as long as the MACD is holding without breaking below the, nine, the, the red line, the, the shorter term moving average, I can keep saying alphabetically A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You can't ever go higher than a G. You have to change the letter. And that could be G slash C, and the next high will be a D. So if there is a new high in Red Hat above 84.44, I have to consider that... It's maybe a leg A, a brand new leg A. That'll be amazing. All right, so A, Red Hat, I see, is acting very well. It might be a little choppy, but I do like it, and I'm going to suggest that 
if you are um, if you're holding it treat the 70 what did I say it was 77 level 70 770 to 77 ish area as your key support um i'll be back we've got one more one more segment to go basel chapman tie gate admissions hour and the dow is now up 12 smb's up three ah, just chopsy chopsy on the side look here's the 10 minute chart as we go out this oh eiffel tower maybe huh oh well consolidating i'll be back straight off this Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or swim. Next on TFNN. Well, folks, so we're looking at the 10-minute chart, and I did, miss, I, I did miss a peak. This is a peak B. Um, so it's really important if this is not going to be an Eiffel Tower, this is that the pattern that looks like this, uh, looks like this, or I usually, I, I usually show it this way. Uh, it's an uppercase A, and that uppercase A um, goes straight up. And I used to do it in red, but we've got enough red, I'll do it in blue. It goes straight up and then straight down, an Eiffel Tower we call it, Eiffel tower failure so this is what we're looking at and i'll tell you right now at 2074 uh, it'll be retesting and we're at 2077 so watch this low very carefully it takes out this low right here that's the low of 1140 at 2076.50 and it goes even lower so this is a very critical period because we're going to see how the market's responding to the yellow thing maybe I anticipated that we actually rally into Wednesday, and Wednesday we start, Wednesday afternoon we start this nervousness, and Thursday we either go down a little bit or just a very narrow session, just waiting, waiting, waiting uh, for that Thursday. And Thursday is a whole day. 
a whole day for us because we are going to be uh, waiting for the Friday at 7 o'clock in the morning, some kind of result coming out if they haven't got polling before. So, okay, let's get back to our story because we're going to wrap up. You're going to go to your swimming. Oh, today's Tuesday. You've got a full day. You've got uh, starting off, you've got John Logan, then you've got uh, Larry Pesavento, then you've got Tom and Tommy, then you've got me, then you've got the swim lesson with Think or Swim. Then you've got Steve Rhodes, you've got Dave White, you've got Tom O'Brien, and then Andy Heck. What a day. What a day it will be. Okay, so the RHT acid was acting quite well. I want to just go back to the VIX index to see where it is right now. Because that's it's really, just keep it simple. VIX is trading at 18.50. And what's very important about this particular pattern, back in the 18 says, uh-oh, made a slightly higher high than yesterday. We're going to watch this real closely. Because if there is a rally, and this goes from 18.49 right now to the 18.50, 70s or 1890s. That's just going to say this market, the Dow will be down 35 points. S&P will be going in negative by about one. And all of a sudden, you're looking at something very different. I haven't had a chance to put a down arrow off to that peak E because the MACD is held well and the stochastic is at 63%. But I have to put a lot of weight on the very big expansion of the MACD. It could continue rolling over. So this is the issue. That if by the end of the day, we're suddenly looking at a sudden buying spree and that buying is Obviously, we, we switched from short to long in the Dow. But most importantly, if there's that buying speed, then 1780s will start to see the market go to back to the plus 53 level in the Dow, plus uh, six, um, I'd have to play, say, plus seven or so in the S&P. So those are your parameters. Just keep it as simple as possible. Now, I'm also going to say this, that as far as the weekly charts are concerned, look at this. This is the Dow INDU. Look how nicely it's being contained in this area right here. Right there. This is, this is, this is a nice high-level consolidation. Breaks underneath that low right there, 17,471. The next level of support is 17,331. Below that, it's trouble. Above this high of 18,016, made in the week of the 10th of uh, uh, June, it's really positive, really positive. So that's the way. Just keep it simple. I'll be back later today. Let me just double check. Whoops. Oh, have I got this? Uh, Tuesday the 21th. Oh, I'm back on, on, on Thursday with Tom O'Brien. Okay, so that's good. Have, have yourself a wonderful rest of the day, everyone. Good luck with the trading. Don't get too carried away. I, we, we're doing sort of nibbling here and there. Um, got the stops fairly tight. Hey, I, I don't mind having cash. There's going to be plenty of buying and plenty of shorting if things go whichever way they go. Don't get carried away. Have patience. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a wonderful day and stay tuned for your swimming lesson. See you later. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.